this is a case a uh, four year old boy who had a history of whitish reflex in both eyes since two months only that's a little bit atypical uh, feature about this patient the lens uh, is a bit swollen sometimes you can get that better information on the table one of the clue to differentiate between post lenticonus and intumescent lens at this stage the anterior capsule will be completely flat in post lenticonus because lens goes behind the vitreous there is already an opening here if you can see i'm just rotating it it looks a little bit swollen so chances of post lenticonus is less obviously you can see the cataract is total in both eyes the lens is totally white here so i'm going to uh, inject uh, vision blue and stain the capsule obviously you need to wash all the time you can always rotate this globe whichever direction you want with the second instrument this is extremely important to begin the capsular axis i make a initial nick like that and then what i use uh, this uh, capsular axis uh, forceps you can see it has got a good uh, grasp here and it's vertically down that makes your uh, capsular axis a little bit easier if it is horizontal you might have to bend it so here it becomes a little bit easier for you to do it i'm going to enter and i'm going to grab this you can see uh, this is the initial uh, uh, opening i'm going to do you can see it is coming from the other side but still doesn't matter you have to grasp and regrasp and try to complete it you can see you have to grasp and regrasp change your direction each time if you are regrasping obviously it's a bit swollen so you have to be careful don't do at a time take your time grasp and regrasp and then complete this and with the same flow you can remove this capsule so you can see the part of the lens is coming out so if it was completely intumescent i would have aspirated a little bit of lens matter before beginning with the capsular axis here i did not do it because it's not completely swollen like a circle when you do a biometry you have a clue what is the lens thickness your biometry machine most of them have something called lens thickness lt it is written general thickness in a child is around 3.5 to 3.8 if it is any way cross beyond that for example say 4 or 4.2 definitely you need to aspirate a little bit second side port incision using a meringotomy you can make it at this stage and uh, when you come back you can just give a small little bit cut so that your instrument goes very easy and smooth the next step is using bimanual irrigation and aspiration technique aspirate the periphery first and then come to the center because that that acts as a scaffold and if it is a possible post lenticonus you might avoid that uh, part going down so many times that's the technique i use i aspirate the periphery first and then come to the center and you should be able to turn your port wherever you want this 360 degree movement is very important because as you can see here as i am taking the superior part the whole nucleus is there it's a very soft one most of the times it's a little bit leathery trying to aspirate it but it's not aspirating completely it's definitely leathery because uh, that's why it is not intumescent at this point of time probably it's best to pause
inferiorly at six o'clock you can feel the whole nucleus and obviously with the perception of your both the hands you know this is not the typical material which will come off very easily so i will use a little bit of phaco energy to take it out can i have the keratome please what is different here is you need to make this uh, main port incision at the beginning generally i don't do this step still i do the ppc again a two step one and then down these are all things you don't expect at the beginning because there is no way i can say that this is a firm nucleus which is not breaking with the bimanual we don't have to chop this so i will use a little bit of phaco energy to take it out okay i need the second instrument because uh, you know it floats this nucleus floats so much this is unexpected sometimes this cortical matter can go in like that can you see a strand there i am going back to the bimanual now there is some cortical matter left at 12 o'clock and there is some little bit firm cortical matter inferiorly both of them i am going to take it out now this is a little bit thick part here sometimes this can be there so can i have the uh, polishing i try to remove the cells as much as possible it's not that in total we can take it just under surface of the capsule the anterior capsule remove as much as visible lens epithelial cells but in a child you try to give whatever is best possible on the table we will try to do the posterior capsular axis and then implant the lens opening of the posterior capsule now you can see the opening uh, i need to rotate sometimes to see that the next step is to grab the posterior capsule more viscoelastic you put deeper you have to go just remember that can you see it's coming on the anti clockwise direction so this is again grasp and regrasp so it looks bigger but i think in my opinion it closes whatever small size you make it so bigger the better and obviously there has to be some place to insert your lens obviously don't make it so big that you can't implant a lens as such you can see this is again a slow process take your time grasp and regrasp I just do a limited anterior vitrectomy. We don't have to go very deep. Uh, rule of thumb is around anterior one third. You go with the maximum vitrectomy available in your machine, which makes your life easier and faster. Initially, you can be like this, flat towards the vitreous, facing towards retina. 
then you need to see this vibration of the poster capsule that means still there are some vitreous remaining yep. and i come from here till here i come like this and then again i chain the port like that you know uh, this is for the 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock and then if you want to see again i'm turning almost 360 degree and turning towards this so that this part is taken care your pincer grip should be good and you should be rolling this see this is directed towards almost uh, seven o'clock now and then same way you can come till two o'clock and then one o'clock see i am very close to the pc i am behind the pc now i don't see any movement of uh, poster capsule almost 360 degrees this is an important step to know that you are almost uh, full because you don't you don't want to overdo it because your globe will become uh, soft and it's not required to do too much of vitrectomy I'm kind, kind of inflating the back. I'm trying to inflate everywhere so that I can go in and place this leading haptic like this. If you can see, I just want to go there, hit the anti-capsule and hit it hard so that it is in the back. Suppose this is the leading haptic. Go there and push it anteriorly because if you push it anteriorly, your lens is not going to go posteriorly. Push it up so that your two-thirds of the lens goes inside. Once it goes, uh, the trailing haptic is just, uh, you know, completion of the nudging or rotation. Don't rotate too much unless it's required. So we are going to implant a lens. This is uh, plus uh, 20.5. So we have already made this uh, incision before and uh, we have to go as down as possible. You can see this is going down. It's just that your, uh, your forceps and the rexis is in a stable position. It won't go beyond this. You need to lift it up and then uh, put it again inside. Somebody was suggesting that you can do vitreorexis. The problem is with the vitreorexis, you may not have stability of the poster capsule. It may not be so good. So this is one of the advantage of doing a primary poster capsule rexis because it will be very stable. You can see this, uh, the leading haptic here. It's in the bag there. And the trailing is above the back. Can you see? This is a trick where here you have to put it inside. It's almost inside now. Check for yourself in all, all directions. It's in the back. The posterior capsule is a little bit oblong now. We need to clear it off. You can repeat your vitrectomy and then complete the surgery. You can see this part is still uh, not gone inside. So you need to make sure that it's, it's in the back. This is a technique where you go behind the lens. So 
So this part you need to clear. So check exactly by going behind the lens because sometimes this part can go beneath it as you can see here. This is a little bit behind that. Can you see? This part is inside. This part is inside. You can see. And here it's inside. So this you have to make sure before closing. You can see this part is inside. And uh, this part is inside. And even because ideally I would not touch this iris because uh, it's not a good idea to touch. Since the dilatation is uh, not there, we need to check this uh, dilatation part. Change your uh, technique or whatever uh, procedure during surgery because it always gives you surprise. Take adequate care postoperatively. Like in this case, I will do four times a day antibiotics and uh, prednisolone eight times per day. And then I will use a dilating drops, maybe cyclopentylate or homotropin, depending upon the availability. Maybe for two weeks, one to two weeks, because dilating drop is very important in addition to steroid. I will give a subconjunctival dexamethasone as well as cifroxime. Uh, these are the two injections I give because uh, it gives some protection till the child is recovering.